In math, when you have an equation that has two variables in it, x and y, such as y equals x plus 2, we always call the x an independent variable and the y a dependent variable. You can think of x as the input and y as the output. As x changes, we want to know what happens to y. So with respects to the equation y equals x plus 2, we might be thinking to ourselves, I wonder what y becomes when x is 0. We realize after simplifying that y becomes 2. We might further wonder to ourselves what y becomes when x is 1. And of course, y becomes 3. So in this particular example, as we increased our independent variable, the x, from 0 to 1, our dependent variable, the y, also increased from 2 to 3. One type of situation that makes it easier to identify which is the independent variable and which is the dependent variable is a cause and effect situation. If x causes y, then x is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable. It's obvious that an effect depends on the cause. For example, adding light bulbs in a dark room will make the room brighter. The brightness of the room is not causing the light bulbs. Instead, the number of light bulbs causes a room to be lit brighter. Therefore, the number of light bulbs is our independent variable since it's the cause. And the amount in which the room is lit up is our dependent variable. One common example of an independent variable that you might come across over and over again is time. And time is basically always an independent variable. Out of the two variables you might see in an equation, if time represents one of the variables, we're almost always interested in seeing how something else changes according to time. For example, if we were comparing time with the erosion of a rock, we would say that time is our independent variable x and the erosion of the rock would be the dependent variable y. In general, you should ask yourself, is there a cause and effect relationship between my two variables? And if there is, then the cause is definitely the independent variable and the effect is the dependent variable. Now in the case of rock erosion, time is not directly influencing the erosion of the rock. Rather, it's mostly water that is touching the rock from rain or from the flow of water from a river that's causing the erosion. So time isn't a direct cause, but even in this case, we would say that time is the independent variable. Why? Because time is being treated like an input. We're wondering to ourselves, if a lot of time goes by, then I can expect to see a lot of erosion. And on the other hand, if less time goes by, we'll see less rock erosion. So to put it more simply, in this situation, more of our independent variable means more of our dependent variable. But not all relationships look like that. For example, if you compare the number of times you swear at a person versus that person's general happiness level, you'd expect to see a completely different relationship. First of all, our independent variable, or shall I say our varying input, is the amount of swearing that's being done. And the outcome that we want to observe is the happiness level of the other person. I can generally assume that the more you swear at a person, the less happy the other person is likely to become. Reversely, the less I swear at a person, the more happy that person is likely to become. And I know there are those rare exceptions of very weird people out there, but I'm talking in a general sense. Most of the times when you're swearing more at a person, a person's going to get less and less happy. So this is a completely different relationship because our independent variable increases and our dependent variable decreases. Whereas in our time versus rock erosion example, as our independent variable increases, our rock erosion also increased. 
and we'll end up exploring how to plot these kind of different types of relationships on a graph later on. But for now, it's important to note that just because an independent variable goes up, it doesn't mean that the dependent variable will go up as well. I can show you this actually algebraically. If I have the equation, let's say y equals negative 2x, then as x becomes bigger and bigger, you can see that y would become more of a negative number, basically smaller. If x was 1, then y is negative 2. But if x became much bigger than 1, let's say 1,000, then y is now negative 2,000. And remember, negative 2,000 is a lot smaller than negative 2. So this equation would be an example of a situation where when our independent variable goes up, our dependent variable goes down. So in the end, what's more important is for us to understand how to identify what's the independent variable and what's the dependent variable. The independent variable, x, is the number that is oftentimes being changed by us or is being treated like an input where you're curious to see varying levels of it. The dependent variable, y, is the outcome or the result of the changes that were seen in x. All right, so the concept we learned in this video is very important as it will relate to our next videos. Feel free to go over the content as much as you want until, of course, you're comfortable with it. So that wraps up our video, and as usual, have a good one.